Hello, hello. What is going on, guys? It is your boy, Brandon, from Audio Addiction. Thanks for hanging out. Tonight, we're going to be jumping into Luna. And I'm, of course, joined by my two lovely co-hosts, Alex and Therese. How are we doing on this Monday? Good. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. This has been a highly contested, highly uh, excited group that I feel like we have taken enough time to weed around uh but we are finally gonna jump into doing luna and obviously we want to do it as you know as effectively as possible so we are gonna be doing uh each member to start out and i'm i know obviously alex probably has a little bit more of a plan on what exactly we're doing but uh very excited to jump into luna so all right i'm gonna give everyone the rundown and a bit of a disclaimer before we get started here I'm sure it will be brought up. I'm sure people will ask. Um, If you're watching on Twitch, thanks for hanging out. Uh, You will get to see the whole stream with the music videos uninterrupted. We are watching all these uh, videos from MP4 files from a account that was linked to me that had archived all of Luna's stuff. Um, So shout out Luna Archive on Twitter. Shout outs. Uh, for putting together a really extensive uh, archive on Drive to to help put this all together. Um, So everything we're going to be watching that would be under BlockBerry Creative is going to be coming straight from these MP4 files in the archive. Nothing is going to be streaming anything from BlockBerry. Um, That being said, if you're watching on YouTube, we will not be including the videos on screen or the audio on screen in this YouTube video because obviously it will get claimed by BlockBerry and they will get all the revenue for the video, which we also don't want. Uh, So the options are obviously to come join us live. I think that is the best option. We do this uh, Luna series. is going to be Mondays for the duration of probably four or five weeks at 8 p.m. EST. Or you can um, watch them full, unedited, and everything on our Patreon. like as soon as the stream ends, typically. Yep. Uh, so what and we're, we're just, doing? Sorry. Are we just going through all the music videos for debut and then the release title tracks? So the format that we're doing loosely is is today is just going to be pre-debut solo debuts like solo member introductions and their individual music videos uh included a little bit of info about that like when they debuted what subunits they're part of and everything uh the next stream will be covering the subunits while they were active under blackberry creative because they are different now um and then we will move straight into the actual full group luna stuff uh the next stream and our uh, fourth stream should wrap into the currently active hmm. Luna in- soloists and groups that have uh, come out of post Luna, like Artemis, Lucemble, Odd Eye Circle, uh, Chu, Eve. Um, that should take us to about four or five streams. That is the plan. It's a lot of content. Uh, we are trying to keep it on the rails as much as possible. Yeah. That being said, I'm no expert in Luna. Uh, Therese is not an expert in Luna. Brandon is definitely doesn't not. know who Luna is. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, <laughs> yep. What so, is a Luna? <laughs> what is a Luna? Yeah. Right. So we're definitely uh, not experts here. This is not a comprehensive guide. This is not like an expert you know, rundown of Luna. We definitely are open to help with stuff or suggestions. Um, so if you're hanging out in YouTube comments or, or Twitch, feel free to yeah. help guide us a little bit. We um, like to I, deep dive into the music and mm-hmm. find our biases along the way. We don't always yes. get into each member. <laughs> that being said, I have been a... Uh, a fan of Luna since their group debut. I didn't Ooh. really know much. Of, I wasn't really aware or too like involved prior to debut. I think I remember Chu's um, solo debut, and I might have heard some of the others 
just through my time listening. But I got into Luna around group debut. Uh, I saw them in concert oh, a while ago. Nice. Very fun. Very, okay. very fun. Uh, and my one piece of Luna, because uh, I have to have some kind of weird merch item to flex every time we cover a group. <laughs> um, let me let me find that real quick. Oh, God. He's going to go look for the, the flex. Well, I already got it. I just oh, okay. To... <laughs> oh, it's is it the jacket? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh. He got the it is real the, uh, it is the UCLA puffer jacket with the Luna patch on it. A flex. Um, and I have the chew patch for it, but it also came with the extra Luna patch as well. And it also came with the uh, exclusive um, photo card set of all the Luna members wearing the jacket. Just Aww. like very funny. <laughs> And I think that photo card set goes for a good bit of money now because it was essentially right like while stuff was going on with BlackBerry. And it was like, I know that not a ton of people got that jacket. Yikes. So that's my that's my random fun piece of merch. Very nice, Alex. We love to see it. Um, Always got something weird. But yeah, um, come join us live, all that sort of stuff. Uh, as mentioned, we try to do this often. Um, just to give a little peer into the looking glass a little bit, uh, I did leave a link to our Discord channel. Come hang out. Uh, it, we talk a lot in the Discord vibe, so come hang out. Let us know who you would like us to cover next if you if you haven't already. Um, I believe we are doing Lucy on Wednesday, so if you True. like Lucy, uh, come hang out for that. Uh, very excited. We're going alphabetical order now. We are going... <laughs> Just, just the L's. Out. Yeah, we're in the L's now. Um, we have any other groups that start with Lou? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to find out. Um, but yeah, either way, very excited. Um, and uh, we'll probably be doing some some more very soon. And if you've been hanging out in uh, chat, you do get channel points. I know right now what we have in terms of the highest channel points is I think it's 100,000 points. You can just pick whatever group you would like us to cover. It doesn't matter. You let us know and we'll cover it. So I don't know where everybody at is in chat. If you'd like to reveal what number you're at, that would be sick. I think Gunky, Gunky is had the most running uh, scarily close. <laughs> Youthful and Sarah, Youthful has 51,000. Oh my God, Gunky has 73,000. Oh God. Jesus. Damn. Oh my God. You're getting real close. He's getting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Crazy. All right. Well, yeah, let us know. And that's who, that will be who, whoever you choose will be the next next one. <laughs> yeah, Gunky, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I'm okay with it. You gave luckily us I've heard, I, Luckily, You're I've fascinating already heard most of it. Human. So. Oh, my God. All right. Well, um, very nice. Anything All right, else? my my other uh other disclaimer is like this document you're seeing, uh, if you if you're seeing it, I don't know if you're now, seeing it or not. Now you will. Okay, this document you're seeing is something that I have been making. I I also obviously I'm not an expert, but I'm trying to put this together as best as I can. So if you see issues on the document, feel free, let me know. I'll make corrections. Um, I'm like trying to use as many accurate resources as possible. Um. But obviously, it's also a work in progress. So you'll see in the bottom there, there's there's stuff not complete. Don't worry. Taking it one stream at a time. Don't look there. <laughs> yes, yes. Gamal, thanks for hanging out. Uh, if I butchered your name, I apologize. Uh, but they said, hello, guys. I'm an expert in case you have any questions. Very nice. We love to hear Ooh. that. We love to Certified hear... expert. Certified expert. We love Let's... to hear it go we need the experts yeah but very excited all right cool well uh i guess we'll get into i know alex has left us a little bit of a breakdown for luna uh give us the breakdown and it looks like from what i can read here luna stylized as i'm not going to read that because you you know can look it up uh is a south korean girl group uh girl can consists of heejin 
Hyunjin, Hasul, uh, Yeojin, Vivi, Kim Lip, Jin So, Chori, uh, Ives, and Chu. Just it's just Eve. Oh, Eve. Okay. Uh, Not even with an S. It's just Eve. Eve. Okay. Uh, Go on and Heiju. Uh, active since October of 2016. They debuted on August 19th of 2018 uh, with their first mini album. I assume that's Plus Plus. Is that correct? Yep. Could you uh, uh, could you zoom in a bit for the people? All right. Yeah, I can blow it up for you guys. Wee. I was <laughs> sorry. I was uh, <laughs> I was with chat wondering how that uh, how that pronunciation for the twelve members is going to go. You did pretty good. Thank yeah, you. you did. Usually, really chat good. flames you for your pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I do get. I do. I am not very good at it. So, rightfully so. Uh, and then it says, uh, under Blackberry Creative, the group is currently inactive, which, again, that's why we're covering them. Uh, concept, original concept was, uh, execute their debut project. Each month, a new member was revealed and released a solo, solo title track, uh, usually accompanied by a duet with a previous member. Okay. Uh, Hee Jin was announced as the first girl in 2016, followed by Hyun Jin, Ha Sul, Yeo Jin, uh, after a few members were announced, they formed subunits, which would release a mini album, usually repackaged. Uh, Yeo Jin, uh, Hyun Jin, and Ha Sul, uh, formed one third, along with Vivi, uh, who has revealed uh, Luna's one third, one third debut. Uh, and then Vivi released her solo between the debut and repackaged albums. Uh, Kim Lip and Jin Sol, uh who was teased as a future singer on Vivi's album. And Choroi uh, then joined, formed Odd Eye Circle. Okay. And Eves, Chu, Gowan, and Heiju, uh, then known as Olivia, uh, were introduced and formed Luna YYXY. Uh, with all 12 members, some units revealed, Luna made their debut as a folk group. Okay, so they all and the that sub last subunit is just uh pronounced y y by y. Oh, okay. Like the x oh. is a by. Interesting. Just yeah, you know, tomato tomato. It's all right. So it doesn't have to do with chromosomes. Because <laughs> that's what I thought this whole time. <laughs> um, that's also I don't know. I don't know. That's also <laughs> what I potentially thought it was as well. I, so I didn't get I didn't get that far. I don't know. It does. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> then why would you make the X not an X? <laughs> oh, God. And it is an X. It's just not pronounced like an X. Okay. You know? No? <laughs> Therese acting like this is the craziest lore thing she's heard in K-pop. It's not. <laughs> okay. Like, if you're going to make a girl group and an album <laughs> themed after chromosomes, then you have to talk about the girl chromosome. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> um, alright I, I also I guess I should mention if you're new here uh, we don't really get into lore uh, yeah. and I and I know that uh, Orbit's hanging out you you probably either are deep into the lore and love it or you just ignore it and hate it that's what my experience with my Orbit friends has been one of my best friends is a like diehard Orbit he just went and saw Artemis like two days ago. Um, huge fan. He doesn't touch the lore. We, I don't think, have time or brain capacity to try to figure it out. <laughs> um, so we will, unless it's like super, super relevant or you want to give us like a little bit of information here and there, we're not going to be really touching it just because it, that's not really what we're doing the series for. Um, so hopefully, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys understand. Hopefully you understand. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yes. According to our resident expert, um, uh, I was mistaken. They're not specifically girls. They are parts of one being from Eden. So mm. my bad to uh, any non-binary peeps out there. I should have recognized the third gender. <laughs> Alien. <laughs> um, youthful asked a good question. Should be re we be requesting B sides or live performances for later streams? Um, the finals, yes, but 
not yet please i will i will make an announcement on a future stream here and in discord and on youtube when i'm looking for recommendations i want to see how far the streams take us and like where we are like by the end of it how many how how many streams it's going to take where where we're at um and then i want to figure out how many songs we need or how many songs we have time to pay extra attention to so i will make an announcement somewhere um looking for b-side recommendations live performances dance practices that kind of extra stuff towards the end of the series to kind of wrap us up i think that's also why we decided to split it and have just like we're doing the luna types like luna and luna subunits type things for mondays because then you know we don't want to just have an entire month where we're just only covering luna stuff so after well this, yeah we want to make sure that we can give some time to other groups as well sure of so. course of course um but yeah cool well i think everyone in chat is in, in agreement so far that uh lore is uh is a little crazy so I think we've tackled some crazy stuff. We have tackled some crazy lore. And we've made up our own lore. (laughs) (laughs) Speak for yourself, Therese. (laughs) Yes. I'm not even going to say it because I don't want you to keep going with that. (laughs) Unless there's there's a giant, mysterious, evil cube that shows up, we're not tying this into any of our, our running lore. Uh, Therese is there a giant mysterious cube? Oh, <laughs> oh god! Oh no! <laughs> All right. Well, I'm ready. I'm ready to start. Cool. Um, we're gonna basically be going in debut order, I think. Ooh, if I got cool. everything right, uh, chat said I was right. Nice. Uh, so the first member to uh really roll out their debut is Hejin. In October of 2016, she is part of the Luna One Third subunit, and she debuted with Vivid. Hmm. Okay. All right. Cool. It looks like I already have. A- and uh, something that maybe uh, some of you in chat can help me understand. My impression of Luna's concept being Girl of the Month going into this and like making a document was that they would each have a representative month, but I learned that they don't. And I thought that going into this, that maybe all of their debuts would be like a specific month and that would be sort of like the girl of the month thing. But that also didn't line up either. Um, okay. Is that just like a a flub from BBC? Or is that or is there like a reason for that? No representative month that has to do more with the connection between month and the moon. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Sounds like lore. So, like the full moon <laughs> names that we learned about, like the strawberry the moon or the. No, no, like the... each full moon oh. of each month has a different name. Hmm. Okay. Uh, CC says, uh, no, they have to have animal color fruits and more. Huh. There's okay. a lot we're missing here. <laughs> so, I also I... know that part of the Luna lore has to do with color theory. <laughs> color theory oh my god yeah i did try to give them like as close to accurate color representations for their uh their bars on the the, uh, on the the document sheet yeah okay um yeah all i know about the animal thing is that yojin's a frog (laughs) let's go all right cool well either way let's get into it uh let's get into vivid hey jin uh it looks like it was vivid so very yep. excited. Um, yeah, Brandon, you want to talk about it first? Uh, I thought it was very good. Um, I'm also curious, and maybe chat might know, uh, or you guys know. Uh, were they they weren't in prior groups? This is like their debut, like each solo member. This was like their first group that they have been a part yes. of. Am I correct on that? Okay. Yeah. Um, I thought it was great. I thought this was like a very cool like introduction to uh Cajun. I thought she had a really she had a very like warm tone which I really liked and I'm curious to see if that is something that will translate into some of the subunit as well as obviously within Luna. Um 
I loved her like vocal bends in the song. I think she utilized it really well, and and uh, it obviously shows her control over her voice, which is always really great to see. Um, on top of that, um, I thought the instrumentation was really fun. I like it's kind of got a little bit of a like swing type of jazz sort of feel to it. I think it might be mostly because of that like sort of big band like horns, like saxophone, um, that sort of vibe. So it's definitely picking up that a lot. Um, I also like that there was some cool kind of like meter in the song where I think a lot of the verses have more of that like sort of shimmery sort of like pop to it. And then in the pre-chorus, it kind of like mellows out a little bit and then you get more of a like a burst in that chorus. Um, and then very, very similarly in the verse, second verse, and then as well as at the bridge, I thought that was really nice and it kind of gives this sort of serene feeling. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought she was really great. Uh, I'm, again, very curious to see how all of these sort of um, moving parts kind of go together. As uh, I don't believe in any of the previous episodes we've done where it's been this, like, broad of a coming together, I guess, per se. So uh, I'd be curious to see how, like, the subunits interact. And then obviously as the whole, like, piece of the puzzle kind of gets put together, uh, I think that's what is obviously what i'm most curious about but overall i thought it was very good i think this is a very good uh starting point um for the group so yeah i enjoyed it yeah i thought um her voice was very clear and it was kind of like very expressive not so much in facial expression but in like the delivery of her voice so I have a feeling that like her type of singing would sound pretty good with pop. And I don't generally tell apart the different members when I'm, when I hear Luno songs, but um, I know they do really good, like pop music. So I'm going to look out for that. I also took notes on like <laughs> things that I've noticed that they seem to assign her character of red slash yellow slash blue. So like primary colors, mm. rabbits. I know someone in the chat also said bunnies. Um, oh, color is pink. Place is Paris. I'm going to add these guys. These are important <laughs> notes. <laughs> I'm going to piece it together as I go. This is going to have like a Charlie um, Day moment by the end of this. <laughs> I'm hoping, but I really, I, I think I'll give up at some point. <laughs> but um, yeah, I thought the song was groovy. I thought it was, it got me interested in Heejin and the group in general. So uh, yeah cool stuff that's it uh, i also thought her voice was very um clear and smooth like really hmm. smooth like i can't think of good descriptives like uh it felt like it really fit over the instrumental here, which obviously, as Brandon mentioned, is like a jazzy, swingy kind of uh, smooth sounding song. So I think that her voice really complements the instrumentation. Um, I am assuming without knowing any better that her animal is a rabbit. <laughs> uh, if I if I had to guess. Uh, <laughs> and assuming there's also some sort of... Um, tie-in or lore or something with the title being vivid and the capitalization of it basically being Vivi, who is another one of our members. So I'm curious if anyone in the chat has like the, if there's a reason for it or if it's just like a nod or a reveal or something, uh, that kind of stuff is interesting to me. And then I guess the other thing I will point out uh, just because we haven't touched on it yet, and we usually do, is the uh, producers on here is for the most part uh, Mono Tree. Oh, who, oh yes, who we are, we who we are familiar with. Let's go. Um, Mono Tree has a, a ton of credits in several groups we've covered. Uh, they are probably. From what I've seen, Luna's like most recurring main producer ish, uh, very frequently working with Luna, and I think they also now frequently work 
in mod house a lot with like triple s and stuff but mm. um super super extensive uh discography they worked on really really talented um producers on a tree so good start i also and like I'd that never, i'd never heard this before by the way Just, ooh, oh yeah me cool. neither um i also like that f under spotify um they this song is listed under luna if anyone's looking for it um and the album names are each of the members names for each ooh. of the like single releases so that's really cool i like that very nice very nice uh Exoda says, uh, the only Laura stuff for Vivid I know is that she uh, introduced colors to the world and she might be the god of Luniverse? Question mark. Ooh. Very interesting. Um, and yeah, it was just confirmed in chat from Youthful that it was Mono Tree. So very cool. Uh, Leo says, uh, Mono Tree is Luna's main producer uh, at the beginning and now is in Artemis, I think. Mm. So very nice. I'm going to add to my notes um, <laughs> Barry Sax, just in case they have instrumental motifs for each of the members. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they got some good Barry Sax. We're going to need to see your work after, Therese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see it. You might not uh, understand it. <laughs> it's all right. We don't have to. Sarah's, a, <laughs> Sarah's the only one who ha will understand it. Um. <laughs> Sarah asked if that's your drag name, Teresa. <laughs> Barry Sex? <laughs> it is now. Uh... It is now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> that's a pretty good drag name. Yeah. yeah. Barry as in baritone. <laughs> oh, my God. Which, yeah. yeah, makes a pretty good drag name. So. Teresa Lord. <laughs> If you have <laughs> if you have good drag names for Alex and I, let us know. <laughs> I did choose. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever thought about this, but I I did have a drag name or a drag sona <laughs> for myself at some point. It was like witchy related. I don't remember. <laughs> that seems on brand, <laughs> Therese. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, the next one we have here looks to be Hyunjin. Hyunjin. And it's around you, which is the next one. So. Correct. Very nice. So let's go. I listen <laughs> as someone who is a cat owner and loves cats. I'm not saying I could be complaining. I'm just saying, finally a town I vibe with. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, that was Hyunjin, and it was around you. If you are hanging out on Twitch with us, very nice. Uh, this was very good. I think. I I think I'm. I think I'm going to start to like Luna a lot, especially if this is, like, musically the motif that a lot of the soloists are working within. Uh, just the jazz and, like, like vibey sort of stuff. I think it's good. I can't, I can't even confirm or deny, really. Oh. I don't know yeah. most of the solo stuff. Well, if anyone in chat does, don't spoil me. But, um, yeah. but I thought this was really, really interesting. Um, I, again, very similarly to the first song we listened to um i felt like this one again can, keeps on that sort of like mellow like jazzy sort of vibey sort of song um which i really like um i i feel like i grown have grown to love jazz as of like maybe the past decade um and i feel like they a lot of k-pop artists may i guess mainly most mostly in like the krb space use a lot of like jazz motifs and stuff so i always find a lot of affinity to like the music that they write um but i really love the piano in this song i think obviously it takes a lot of the melodic lead on the track but i gotta give a shout out to whoever their bass player is because their bass player was super smooth in this song and just added that like just little bit of subtle edge to the song that i really appreciate um but Hyunjin, her voice was super, super nice. Um, it almost like, uh, I'm trying to think of who it gives me a vibe of, and I'm probably going to forget. But um, but she's really got, again, very similarly to first, just a smooth sort of tone. Um, but it just feels very inviting. And like the way that she utilizes a lot of the melodies within this track is really nice. 
And I think the way that she kind of transitions between the songs, different uh, like key changes or like chord changes that are like really nice. I think she does a great job of kind of adding her really like beautiful texture and color to her, uh, these songs. Um, I also really appreciate it. I felt like maybe dissimilarly to the first song, uh, this song definitely had a lot more like harmonies in it. There was a lot cooler, like higher, like note tones, especially like with the, um, I think the second chorus is where they really kind of laid out more of the vocals on that. Um, and I think she harmonizes with herself really well. Um, and I feel like that's obviously a really strong point of, of her vocals. Um, not only to be able to do both, but just for them to harmonize so well. Um, so I got to give a, also a shout out to their producers. I think they really worked well with them on these songs. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought this was another great one. I've, I've really enjoyed both soloist songs so far. Um, and can't complain. This is, this is a good start for me. So I'm feeling it. Uh, speaking of producers, I, I guess I'll tackle that and go real quick. Uh, produce, this is produced uh, lyrically, composition, and arrangement by uh, one person, single-handedly. Uh, Lee Ju Hyung from Mono Tree. So Very nice. Shout out, round of applause for them for <clears throat> solely producing a beautiful song. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I honestly don't see like single production credits that often in k-pop is really impressive like, yeah like single for everything you like sometimes you'll see like a single lyricist or a single arranger or something but it's pretty interesting um i'm having fun with this because i like i mentioned don't really know all the solo stuff really um i definitely know choose and i think i know uh I actually don't know. I might only know choose to be honest. Hmm. Um, so I I don't really have experience um, hearing Luna in this context or hearing the members in this context because a lot of like their title tracks and the B sides that I think I would be more familiar with are a very different sound. So it's really nice hearing them in these more like smooth, laid back. Uh, dialed back quite a bit mm. instrumentations and yeah. and formats um it definitely is giving me a greater appreciation for their like individual like you know the little individual differences and and tones they each uniquely have and stuff so i, I also really enjoyed this as well i thought notably the uh, harmonies, I think, as Brandon mentioned, were really nice, and the on the production end, the um, chord changes were really, really interesting. Yeah, uh, a lot of really fun uh, chord changes, and like uh, I, I thought, the piano accompaniment was, accompaniment was very nice. Mm -hmm. Therese. Well, I'm not surprised that one person did this all themselves. I mean, you're right. It is kind of uncommon to see in K-pop, but it did give yeah. me that uh, feel for like singer songwriter, sort of like cafe music, yeah. um, very chill. Uh, Hyunjin's voice is very breathy and like kind of indifferent, but not in a bad way. Like it, it's the it's the kind of tone that makes you feel comfortable or like you're just hanging out with someone rather than someone that's performing for you, you know? Yeah. Um, I liked it. And uh, yeah, I added all the same notes. Uh, I noticed more green. Someone said her color was yellow. So I added that as well. Um, cat, of course. <laughs> and we, we heard Tokyo is her city. Oh. And I put piano as what I know now as her defining <laughs> characteristics. <laughs> they better use these. <laughs> they better use these same instruments. <laughs> we'll find out. For I'm solo sure. work. <laughs> More Barry Sax. You see Therese, Therese on like the fifth stream is going to be have like a a bulletin board behind her with a bunch oh, of know. red string and newspaper <laughs> clippings and like photo cards. <laughs> <laughs> albums like yeah, placed up on send, the wall. send me your photo card so i can start putting them up on a board and <laughs> oh my god i can't wait 
check out yeah check out for next stream it's gonna be crazy um ufo says uh that he produced triple s as well as plenty of uh, uh sm and jyp artists uh like exo girls generation red velvet twice got seven 2 p.m and mix etc uh man has been in the industry for a while we we love to see it um that was the group that I was trying to think of, Red Velvet, but, like, not their main title track. Like, I think if you heard, like, one of their B-sides, like, if like one of their more somber, like, instrumentally driven tracks, that's what it kind of reminded me of. So, appreciate you, Fool. Um, Leo X made a comment that I kind of want to touch on a little bit. Uh, they said, it was incredible to experience the pre-debut because in addition to having the solo debut of each member... It was meeting someone else who was part of the group and making it difficult for you to choose a bias, um, which I agree. I think it is a really interesting idea. It's definitely the first to this scale uh, rollout that was done this way, where it was like over a year of debuting members, like a around one month at a time ish. There were some gaps, um, but I, I think if I'm correct, I, I think that sort of <laughs> bit them in the ass a little bit with the company, not per se, like the group itself, but like company wise. Um, but I can imagine like being there pre debut and getting like a whole month to kind of absorb content from like, uh, one of the members. I don't know if they went on like shows or anything, but to have like a whole month to sit and like get to know a new member, probably really helps you familiarize yourself with them and like get to know them better so that when it debuts as a full 12 member group, it it's not like as chaotic as maybe it will be for Brandon now who's jumping into 12 <laughs> members all at once. You know what yeah. I mean? It does seem like a very good, good idea to get everybody interested in every member. That's how I, that's how I'm going to probably feel like, uh, if we ever get to like a larger group where they are like debuted in that sort of like breakdown oh man oh like brain can already comprehend so much already and i feel like uh this is going to be testing the limits here so i also really like how they just combined all of the subunits into under one like artist name because having to find all those subunits and then learning that that's a subunit or that's part of a fuller pack, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so much extra. <laughs> it's a lot, but I I gotta get appreciate their their I gotta appreciate their like candor to have like Alex said have one member like per time period to just feel like okay, like we can give them that amount of time. We'll move on to the next member. You get a set, mm -hmm. set amount of time. Like, I think it gives you more appreciation for each individual member. Where I feel like, again, if I've half, and I'm not even trying to compare them to another group, but like, if let's say, for example, I like use twice, right? Like, that is much harder of a group that I feel like if I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna pick specific people in a song that I'm like, okay, I enjoy this. But I also like the fact that I get to each individually listen to a song that they've done. And I'm like, cool. This is very nice. Like, I like different elements of each member. And then I'm hoping that all of my collective thoughts, once we get into, like, subunit and get into, like, full group things, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I I'm excited to just know them more individually, where I feel like, again, it's a little bit more difficult, I think, with larger groups. Um, and that is no disrespect to, to any of them, obviously. Well What's crazy is that this is a larger group. It's a 12 yeah, member group. Sure. So it's like this, this kind of artist profile where they have each of the members and their own albums listed out. They have each of the subunits, but they're not specified as like Luna X or YY XY or Luna, mm -hmm. whatever. Luna, why, why, bye, why? Sorry, I just learned that. And, <laughs> and um, I, I think just having them all under the same roof makes it so much easier to be like, oh, I like this music. Let me see what else they've done rather than having to switch between different artists and all that. Um, I, I really, I have a trouble grasping the concepts of units generally if it's not specific to like rap unit or vocal sure. unit yeah, yeah. so i really like this particular setup and i wish more groups had honestly like copied <laughs> something like this so that they would be able to it'd be easier to find them 
Yeah, I yeah I, I gotta agree with you, Therese. So, but yeah, it's great. So if you have if you have been following Luna since debut or pre debut, I guess technically, then cool, very nice. Um, uh, well, we're gonna move on right. to the next one. We have Hasul time. Hasul, uh, let me in. So, all right, that was Hasul. Damn. Uh, let me in. If you are hanging out for Luna, very nice, very nice. Um, anyone else want to start? Sure. Um, I felt like I was in a listening to like a classical Disney song. There, it was so whimsical. Yeah, it was and very whimsical. Yeah. I got to break you guys out of thinking classical is Disney. Classical is Disney. <laughs> classical is Disney. <laughs> classical is Disney. Classical is Therese, Disney. We, we don't live in we don't live in Florida. We don't know any better. Yeah, that's what we believe. Yeah, we live in Pennsylvania. <laughs> um. Disney's probably wrong, but <laughs> this is much closer to like Ghibli. I was gonna or... say, I was gonna say Ghibli. Yeah. yeah, that was my first thought. Yeah. Okay. Well, the arrangement is very, very nice. It is. I felt like I was on a journey uh, through the instrumentation here. It was so, uh, like diverse with instrumentation and like new orchestral instruments being added and, uh taken away and I, I don't know i thought it was really nice the vocals hustle's vocals were so beautiful uh especially her like falsetto and that yeah. little like belty higher note she hit towards the end there um i was also caught a little bit off guard by the ending it em- ended a little more abruptly than i had imagined it would um with just that like one i forget what she whispered at the end uh I was like, damn, I thought we were getting like a big outro or something that would I don't know, take us out. But uh it was pretty pretty cold, abrupt ending. Uh I thought it was very good though. I like this a lot. And it was uh composed by one person as well. Ooh, Oreo. Wow. Shout out. Wait, wait, who are the producers? Should we be writing this down? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa's gonna have so are many. Are they notes. tied to specific <laughs> members? <laughs> oh my god! Pop opera, interesting. Pop opera, yeah. And the wiki says it's classical crossover. Huh. Hmm. All right. I thought it was interesting that it it felt very classical, but then they were implementing some like more modern percussion and modern drums and stuff, and that that was really fun. Thought that gave it like a very like fresh modern feel. It was good. Also the music video was gorgeous. Yes. It looks like uh it looks like CC uh gave us a comment. Uh they said uh Hasul's color is green. Uh her animal is a white bird and the place is Iceland and also added that she trained as an opera singer. Which is very cool. Wow. Ah, interesting. Very nice, very nice. Um, I think for me, I agree with Alex. It is very whimsical, very like Studio Ghibli esque, um, which I love. Uh, I love those movies, so felt very uh relatable to that. Um, I also and Teresa is our resident flautist, so mm-hmm. I don't know if there was a little flute. There was a little flute mixed in there, if I'm not mistaken, potentially. I don't know. I think it was just strings. Was it strings? I thought I heard a flute. I thought I heard a little flute. Well, yeah. flute one or two flutes is common in an orchestra, but okay. I'd say it was mostly strings. <laughs> okay. Well, that was debunked. Thanks, guys. Um, I think that, like I said, the instrumentation is was really great, but um, Hasil's voice was like so interesting. Uh, I'm I'm very curious uh, in terms of um, in terms of how she'll mix in with Luna. Uh, just because I feel like she has a very like soft and like like petite type of vocal, like it's very like somber and like it's very soft. But like in some in some parts, I feel like she does have like obviously she's an opera singer, so I feel like she can be a little bit more boisterous. I'm sure. Um, so I'm very curious to see how she'll fit in the context of Luna or just even in a subunit, uh, specifically. Uh, but I thought it was very good um again music video was shot in iceland which was gorgeous uh definitely we'll have to add that to my list of places to visit now um 
but yeah overall that is a very good package i think that i i definitely feel like the instrumentation was a little bit more at the forefront of this song which is i don't think is particularly a bad thing but when you know we're talking about groups that have great vocalists you know i'm, I'm curious to see in terms of the in terms of the vibes uh going further so um yeah i don't know that was very solid I, again i'm curious where she'll sit in in terms of the uh in terms of the production with subunit and luna as a whole but therese what's your thoughts on the song this was a beautiful song to listen to um it kind of gave me like i want to say like barbie movie vibes <laughs> hmm. um okay. dancing on water uh floating like leaves something very girly and sweet um the it, it's very delicate but i do really like my favorite instrument and this was the string bass different from your bass alex um <laughs> that also has strings <laughs> not that different <laughs> not that different not that different um, yeah but uh i i thought it it was pretty like modernly mixed so it it, it was still what i would consider like a pop ballad i guess but hmm. i i think it's still beautiful to listen to um i could tell has wait hasu 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 um has a tendency to do some cursive singing <laughs> yes yeah. and i will be listening for that as she develops um well as she's already done that singing probably but um yeah and uh i wrote red because i guess the beginning color doesn't mean anything in these videos <laughs> so we're gonna go with green um a lot of like whites and snow um birds there were lots of birds and i love that white wig with that um kind of ruffly outfit that was really cool yeah it was beautiful very interesting yeah um all right let's see uh <laughs> uh you will as <laughs> Alex, who is the producer of the song, and it was Oreo, uh, as multiple people apparently, uh, as a team, uh. have produced songs such as Chung Ha's Why Don't You Know and Love You. And then Kelly asked if I am going to do an Iceland vlog. I don't know. Yeah, Brandon's going to travel to all the Luna locations <laughs> and vlog it. Oh, God. At 7,000 subs. No, don't say that. No. <laughs> It'd be much more than 7,000 subs. I just want to let you know. <laughs> right after the dance stream. Oh, God. Shut up. <laughs> that is still happening, by the way. So just in case anyone's <laughs> aware. Um, uh, 700,000. Uh, maybe, yeah. Um, yeah, if you want to start a GoFundMe <laughs> for the Luna Tour, then sure. I'm down for it, you know. Like Sarah's comment, it, Brandon's doing the, Brandon's going to be the one to do the Luna World Tour, but it's not the Luna World Tour everyone wants. <laughs> <laughs> I just show up at all the locations, I'm like, hi, what's yeah. up? <laughs> uh, we've been waiting so, yes, I know, I know, it's, it, we, the one, the one we deserve. <laughs> wow, all right, we're <laughs> getting wildly <laughs> off topic here. Um, All right, cool, well. Very excited. Um, either way, uh, CC also said that uh, uh, she is the leader of Luna and the first subunit. So, very nice. Ah. And uh, cool. Sarah agreed that it is Swan, uh, Barbie Swan Lake for sure, Therese. So, there you go. Gotta watch it. Very nice. All right. Cinematic um, classic. <laughs> it's Yojin time. Yojin. Um, so my note for Yojin I have here is, and somebody can correct me or like help me if I am misunderstanding, but I tried to looking into it as much as possible. She is technically a part of Luna One Third, but never did anything with them. Uh, and the speculation, from what I could tell, is that she was just too young at debut to do activities. She was fourteen. Oh wow! Um, I, there is other speculation out there. There's like other people. There's people saying a bunch of reasons. 
um somebody i saw somebody posting about like oh it's lore that she's not in um i don't know if anybody has more information that's basically the best i could find but uh she is like kind of part of luna one third i think but technically I not see... in the subunit i see multiple comments on yes she's the slash in one third one slash three she <laughs> is the slash <laughs> okay <laughs> I, I love that. This, okay. I want to be the. I want to be Got the slash it. in audio addiction. <laughs> Equals slash. <laughs> <laughs> Equals. Oh my god. <laughs> Equals slash. Let's go. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. No, she really is a slash. She <laughs> is. A, okay. This is hey. not what they meant when they said slay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my Luckily, god. we've been doing this long enough to for this to not be the craziest thing we've heard yet. Yeah, I was gonna say uh... we've, we've heard some crazy <laughs> shit. So it was good to know. Well, let's go. Kiss later. <laughs> this is Yojin. Kiss later. I can't even fucking speak. Jesus Christ! Oh my god! What huh. the fuck? <laughs> oh. Well. That, that, that was, was interesting. And kiss later. That was it. Oh my Therese, why don't you go first? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I got everything. <laughs> you want to run it back? Um, I I'm even more confused as to how she's the slash. I. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't give you um, big slash energy. Yeah, this is, it yeah. doesn't give me slash energy. It gives me uh cake energy for sure. Cake energy. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was really cute. Uh, if I didn't already know, wait, is she the Magne? Is, is she? Is she? I think so. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, because I, this, I was like, yeah, she's the youngest because they, <laughs> she's going around eating candy, like singing about cute things or very cute lyrics. Um, she has a very like the lyrics sweet heart. Were, like f odd. The lyrics were they, like they were not, odd. Like. I, I'm assuming wanting a relationship to like pace themselves or like yeah not push Con consent boundaries consent I guess not be pushy. Mm -hmm. eh. And she has like a very sweet heart sort of voice. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that was just like the key that she was singing in, but it was it had a a lilt to it. I guess. Um, I couldn't focus on one particular instrument she's got a lot going on she can yeah. play piano with her toes that's cool for free <laughs> for free <laughs> um i guess i'll say trumpet because it gave me more mostly trumpet energy but um <laughs> i like the frogs this, this is definitely like the cutest video we've seen um yeah I, I like it a lot more with the music video than I think I would if I listened to it on my own. So mm. that's kudos. That's kudos. I can probably agree with that. Um, I love like the big band kind of yeah. yep. high energy upbeat. I was tapping my fingers along the whole way, bobbing my head. I couldn't stop moving my seat. Uh, very fun. Very fun switch up of energy kind of like a different vibe from what we've gotten so far um i think her being the youngest and like 14 when this came out i think like the the concept and like the execution and the video the styling and everything is like appropriate and fitting i th i think um i don't know overall i thought it was really fun i, I love frogs <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with Luna, nothing to do with Luna at all. A total aside, but like extra points because I like frogs. Um, the frog was killing the choreo. Yeah, that one scene. Um, but also her voice sounded great. Like she was hitting some really, really beautiful harmonies. I think we kind of like all noticed at the same time. Uh, somewhere around the bridge, there was like a really nice like ascending vocal run. Oh yeah, at the uh, end. Yeah, the yeah, en yeah. That ended with like a, a really. Uh, Really nice falsetto. Um, so, yeah, this is the... I don't know. I, I'll 
have to recollect my thoughts at the end. I don't know if it's my favorite so far, but it's definitely the most fun so far. Yeah. Um, I feel like Alex took the words right out of my mouth. I will say in terms of, uh, in terms of like vibe, this was like immediately, like within the first like five seconds, I was like, oh, I know I'm going to enjoy this song. And as it kind of progressed, it just snowballed and I just like enjoyed it that much more. <laughs> um, again, I obviously want to give some room to see what the other members do but i liked how goofy it was um uh, i loved the like lightness of the song i do think that um i do agree with uh sarah saying that it was sugary sweet i agree definitely in that sort of vibe for sure um but yeah overall i think her voice was really nice i like like her tonality she's got a very unique tone what i've noticed about like the different members of luna so far is they all have like a unique sort of vocal quality um so i'm very curious to see how they all kind of again layer out in in like subunit or like again full luna songs um but i thought this was very nice overall um again uh the big band swing energy is like i feel like you really can't go wrong with that it's always a, like at least for me in terms of the streams that we've done it always feels very tried and true something i'm always going to really enjoy um so definitely enjoy that element of it um and big shout outs to their like producers and stuff because there's a lot of really great instrumentation going on in the song that i don't even f fully feel like i was able to pay attention to because the music video was like crazy and very funny um the music was like very boisterous very fun very um upbeat so i'd love to go back i probably will go back and listen to this song again um but overall i really liked it um and again curious to see uh what she'll be doing going further uh looks like uh zoda said that uh fun fact uh yejin uh hated her animal being a frog so she recently changed it to a bear uh and also they said can that, do the, that no I, I guess so wait does that mean frog is open <laughs> i guess so. alex the new alex, member of you, alex, yeah. <laughs> alex jumps in associated uh, with minions and <laughs> yeah I'm a, I'm a yellow frog yellow frog yeah <laughs> uh, and they also said the songs about liking a person but not ready to kiss them and preferred to hug instead huh very interesting very interesting uh and I, because i forgot to mention the producer credits on here um it is composed and arranged by uh huang hyun who is part oh. of monetary and lyrically uh, assisted by shin agnes who is also a part of monotree so a monotree production here very nice another monotree yeah. classic love to see it uh evil says title track kiss later is an upbeat lively candy pop uh song it contains Eugen's uh uniqueness the lyrics express appropriate healthy attitudes telling a boyfriend that we're still young and so let's study and get to college before kissing huh very yeah, interesting study don't kiss study <laughs> <laughs> adding it to my list <laughs> a little past I feel time. called out by Sarah who said my animal would be frog and my instrument slot machine <laughs> <laughs> and a casino is your location <laughs> yeah. Las Vegas Las Vegas let's go yeah. oh my god Kaylee says we need everyone's animal instruments and color after the stream okay are you saying uh, for us well you know mine now well you know Alex's <laughs> Teresa and I are gonna have to come up with our own slot machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucked up. How are you gonna play a slot machine now? <laughs> it could yeah, be worse. All, it could the, be all like the standard harmonica. slot machine, you get all the standard sounds. Okay, yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. Well, we'll. we'll I you we'll used it, it in uh in coin. Oh yeah, yeah. She did. Yeah. My favorite so, instrument. You know, find my credits there. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'd love to see it. All right. We're going to move on to the next one, which is uh, I Vivi. Vivi. And it's Every Day I Love You featuring Hasul. Very nice. Let's go. Uh, I like this song a lot. 
Uh, I feel like this has been a common thread throughout all of these songs. I have not said, I have not disliked any of these songs, but this feels very like 80s synth pop, and I love a good 80s synth pop sort of song. Um, I loved a lot of like uh, the vocal tonality that uh, Vivi used. I think she's got a really like sweet tone as well. Um, and I think this song does a really great job of highlighting that. Uh, there are some really great harmony moments, more specifically in the choruses. I think they sounded really, um, really fun, a little boisterous. Uh, so I love that as well. Um, I believe uh, Hasul did the rap first, which was great. I think she sounded fantastic. Uh, very excited mm -hmm. to see more of her, obviously in future releases. Um, but overall, I thought this is this is a great song. I think it highlights her very well. Um, she seems very comfortable singing this style of music. So, um, very curious to see again what um what vibe that you know all of these subunits create as well as Luna as a whole because. Obviously, I'm going into all of this blind, so very curious to see how they all come, kind of come together. But, but yeah, this '80s like synth pop sort of vibe always is it always is a hit. I feel so, um, really enjoyed it. Uh, Youful said that uh, this video features a cameo from a previously introduced member to at this point. All, uh, oh, Asu. Oh. All, all okay. All sorry, previously all previously introduced members at this point, as well as uh, Blackberry Creative's uh, first known male trainee, known as Love, uh, former member of Only One of. Very nice, very nice. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no. Overall, that this was great. Uh, I think it was a good vibe. Um, and again, curious to see what the subunit has for us uh, in a future stream. Very cool. Anyone else? Um, uh, that sure. dude wasn't um real, right? In the music video, like he was the the anime character she was dreaming about. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I'm assuming. <laughs> I, it was so silly to me how <laughs> he's like, "Oh my god, he's so hot," and he's playing DDR. <laughs> I, What's I wrong with that, Therese? That's not that's not how to woo a woman. But okay, fair enough. It wasn't just DDR. He was <laughs> yeah. breakdancing on it. Yeah. <laughs> and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I I thought it was silly enough that I was like, oh, this is probably a dream, and it was. So. <laughs> uh, oh, and just um, just casually drops. Also, VV is an android. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Is that why she has an M Tarola phone? <laughs> Okay, I'm writing it oh down. M Tarola Android. Um <laughs> Okay, uh I I really like the song. I think it's cute and fun. I accidentally clicked on the wrong one in Spotify and I realized there's two versions of the same song, but they're called two different things. Um one is called Every Day I Love You, one is called Every Day I Need You. But Every Day I Love You, uh Features Hasul and Every Day I Need You features uh, Jin Sol. And I'm really impressed that I could read those because they're in. Um, um, I almost said Hiragata. <laughs> they're in. Uh, and Hangul? They're in Hangul. I got <laughs> Sorry, you, Therese. I've been studying too much Japanese. I got you, um, Therese. And I know enough to be able to make out the first sounds of each of those names now. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Um, okay, so it, it's not, it's, I only learned the names of the people I know, so it doesn't count. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did like the features, even though I don't think they were fully, it wasn't like fully present in this video. Maybe it's more present in the track itself where those are, those features are listed. But I did really like the wrapping. Um, <laughs> Yes, I know you. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I did assign the theremin as the associated instrument now, uh, which also makes sense why it would be assigned to an android. Um, I also think it's unfair when uh, I saw... What was the... The assigning uh, color and everything... Um, Oh yes, Sissy, Sissy. Um, 
said her assigned color is pastel rose, which I think is Ooh. kind of a cop out if there's already a pink assigned, but um, I'll let it slide. And deer, I would have not gotten deer from this music video, I don't think. So good to know. And then the assigned place is like Hong Kong and Busan. So she gets two. <laughs> um, and she's the oldest. Oh. But yeah, huh. she has an. She also has a nice breathy tone, similar to um, Hyunjin, uh, but it has more of a like weight to it. So it's breathy, but it's meaty. <laughs> and she's from Hong Kong. Yes. Uh, it looks like oh. Nigel's place says uh, the second MV has the deer. Okay. Gotcha. Very nice. Hmm. Wow, a lot of information to take. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, and now the representative colors are the intro colors. Ah. Got it. Okay. Good to know. Okay. Uh, I thought this was very fun. I like synth pop. This, I like that the uh, the song here felt like exactly what I was watching it was like roller disco vibes. It mm -hmm. it fit so perfectly. Um, I also thought Hustle's feature was uh very good. The rapping was good. Um, I don't really know how much more I have to add on to what you guys said, but I will touch a little bit on some credits here. They are new credits Ooh. for us, and Let's there go. are a lot of them. Um, I'm going to just touch on the composition and arrangement credits. Um, a lot of them are repeating, but basically our, our main uh, credits here are uh, Yun Youngmin, Kim Namyung, uh, Nonin Orini, or Orini, uh, and Melody Gongjak So. Oh. Um, and most of them worked on the arrangement as well and lyrics with the addition of. That's it, actually. It looks like part of the production team is, is called High Season. I don't know if that is a team or a person. It looks like it's a team, um, but I'm not familiar with them. But uh, basically all new credits here. So I don't know if these are producers that kind of uh, come back in more frequent uh, Luna stuff or if this is like a, a one-off. But very fun track. Very well produced. The uh, uh, slap bass was going crazy. Yeah, it was cooking. Slap bass was really fun in the chorus. Uh, that was good. That was tight. Yeah, I agree. Uh. Joda said that uh, she was also a model before becoming a member of Luna. Very interesting. Hmm. Very interesting. Good for her. Nice. All right. Well, I feel like to keep the train moving, we are now on to Kim Lip uh, and their song Eclipse. Very, very interesting. Let's go. Um, <laughs> no evil cube in this MV. It's all circle. <laughs> That's circles true. are the best. Circles are That's, my favorite. Circles are the best. You know, they're they're the ones who are gonna compete against Big Cube, you know? So I love to see it. Um I guess I'll start. Uh I love this song. This is probably one of my favorites that we've listened to tonight. Um I think it's hard to not bob your head and feel this song. Uh just because inherently it just feel like it's got a great sort of dance vibe to it. Um but I feel like this song is like, at least for me, like that perfect intersection of like, like the K R and B type, like with like a little bit of like synthy dance pop to it, um, which I think is great. Um, and I think Kim Lib obviously crushed it in the song. Um, she's got a she's got like this sort of like sereneness to her vocals in some parts, especially I would say more specifically into um, like the verses but then is able to deliver on some of these really great like vocal runs and melodies and stuff. There are some like really beautiful harmonies as well. Um, and I feel like she's all, I mean, I would imagine she's inspired by a lot of like R and B vocalists or like, um, you know, I don't, again, I, in terms of popularity, maybe like a, um, like an Ariana Grande or like a Christina Aguilera type, like vibe in terms of vocals. Cause I think there is definitely some melodies. I feel like they, have similarly but not obviously exactly the same but i think in terms of like runs and stuff like i would imagine 
in terms of like process maybe it might be in the same sort of path um i think again really like the kind of punchy synth sort of sound of the instrumentation it was really fun as well um but yeah this is to me is like a 10 out of 10 song i really enjoyed this one a lot um choreo was really fun um and i also appreciate the music video wasn't like as much as I love the over-the-top music videos, I felt like this one was pretty plain Jane, and I'm completely fine with it. It just allowed me to kind of immerse myself into the song a little bit more. So, um, yeah, this is one, this one's definitely amongst my favorites and might be my favorite of the night, potentially. So, I think, uh, like, it, I guess, is a little less over-the-top as far as, like, the video goes itself, but it definitely is, like, shot really well. I think Agreed. like they did a that space I think for people that are more general K-pop fans have like seen everything that can be done with that space. Oh yeah. Um I think they did a really cool job here. I think like some of the color grading and like the the way that they used the space was really cool. And obviously mm-hmm. they went for like a, a little more mature of a concept here than with the previous um introduction music videos so far. Um a bit of a different vibe. This is one of the songs I have heard before. Uh, as soon as that like chorus came in, I was like, oh, this is Eclipse. Okay, I, I've heard this. Um, I agree. It's a very, very good song. Very, I love R&B style songs and K-pop just because of like how much you can do with them. Like You can make them danceable. You can make them catchy. You can make the vocals uh, show off. Like You can do so much with R&B and K-pop, and I think it just works really well here i, I think it was very fun Therese. and i guess i i will uh i will touch the credits real quick okay it is produced by daniel klein and charlie taft uh hmm. lyrics are by uh mono tree as well but uh looking into the producer i know they've worked on quite a bit of SM stuff, it looks like Girls' Generation, EXO songs, mm. uh, Red Velvet songs. So, not sure how that happened. Um, not sure what the crossover is. They apparently have worked on uh, Eclipse and Puzzle from the Luna Ooh. discography. Okay. I. I'm reading a Reddit thread because I saw uh, Gamil said that um, this was one of the first uses of the building TM, um, which I do recognize Luna's used this building before, not I just was, Kim Lin. Yeah. yeah. I was um, also going to say I recognize this from. So I've already. <laughs> Assigned Kim Lip is building Coon is Red is Owl is apparently super speedy, and I have assigned her the synths because I thought they were uh, more of a highlight than the last than um, in Vivi was definitely more theremin, and yeah, these are yeah. all based. <laughs> Some of these were uh, sissy included but most of these are based on my own personal experience <laughs> listening to the <this> song <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah i that's pretty cool i um there's a whole reddit thread on all of the music videos that have used this building you can go if you just search like circular building in k-pop you'll find it it's um the gimchon school building and it's it's classic i really like the use of it here i think it gave me like adult rave dance party <laughs> um it's definitely a more sultry use and sultry voice from kim lip um and i liked the r&b inclusion uh it's definitely more grown up um oh does kim lip have a, an actual location sierra oh like the sierra in general i'll mm. add it i'll add it but building kuhn to me will always be canon <laughs> um, um oh Teresa, i, I didn't have much else to say i thought it was a lovely song one of my favorites from tonight um it's hard to say though because they're all so different and i love them all for very different reasons yeah i would agree so far so far i've liked all of them for different reasons but i think it's uh cool um 
uh cc says um uh eclipse was recommended by nasa that's crazy okay very interesting. She doesn't have That's... she doesn't have a location, but she can time travel. Eclipse ah. was recommend. Oh, like NASA posted the song as a recommendation, mm -hmm. is what I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. I I was reading it like Eclipse was recommended. Like the name Eclipse for this song was recommended <laughs> to be used by NASA. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Nigel's Play says, uh, this is honestly reminding me how unique all of the Luna Girls solos are. Yeah, I think so far, just diving into it, it's been very, very interesting. Um, the Stitcher Twin, thanks for hanging out. Uh, they said, YYXY have fruits too. Oh, God, we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> okay, wait. Remind me again. Kim <laughs> Lips in Odd Eye Circle and VV... That was still in one third. Yes. Okay. Mm. I gotta add this to the list. <laughs> yep. She, she's in odd eye circle and and she time travels. Very nice. Uh, Sarah says, just email NASA. What do I name my song? <laughs> <laughs> hey, they might answer. They just had one recently that was like a bunch of inside jokes within the K-pop fandom. Like based around, I think they said like, uh, "There's a supernova coming if you boom boom clap," and <laughs> it, it was like a bunch of K-pop songs on their social media. <laughs> Pretty funny. How do I get that NASA job? Right. Maybe yeah. The only <laughs> NASA job I'm qualified for. <laughs> Be get K-pop Stan. <laughs> um. All right. Yeah. Six down. Six more to go. Uh. Citra Twin says, "Yeah, I've been in orbit since Heijin." I love watching people discover Luna. Glad I found you guys. Well, thanks for hanging out. This is part one of Mucho. So, uh, yeah, thanks for hanging. We love to see it. Feel free to give us information. So, um, all right. Well, the next Jin one we Soul. have is Jin Soul. Uh, and this one is Singing in the Rain, which is not to be confused with another song that is also Singing in the Rain. A classic, you know? So, yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, that was Jin Soul singing in the rain. If you're joining us, water Guys, is wet. Water All is right. wet. <laughs> water is wet. This just in. I'm Breaking so glad we checked out Luna so I could learn. <laughs> I love Future Bays. Whoa! Woo! Sing it, scream it from the rooftops. I love Future Bays. Um. I don't know. I feel like you throw a future bass in a K-pop song, it's a it's a it's a hit for me. Um, I thought this is really fun. The I basically want to talk about some of the instrumental stuff in production here because the first thing like out of the gate is really really interesting fun percussion, um, going on right from the start and it's a pretty mm -hmm. high tempo song, so like you're kind of thrown right into it and it feels very. Uh, fast tempo because the idea of future bass typically is it halves the tempo or goes into like a halftime during drops. So hmm. oftentimes a lot of your verses or your other parts of the song, typically you're either song is arranged in like full full tempo or half tempo. Typically, I guess for a future bass song like this, so the rest of the song feels very fast. But when the chorus comes in, it halves and it feels very like pulled back and kind of like slow. And it uses a lot of um, pitch sliding on the chords, which is really nice. Yeah. Like portamento sliding. And there are so many fun little drum samples in there and uh, like chopped up vocal samples going on. Uh, fun little like bass grooves thrown in. The, the vocals are processed to aid in how big those synths sound. And it just, like, makes everything sound really wide. And I like that. I love, like, a... I don't know, something like Future Bass, where... Along with other genres of EDM, for sure, where a lot of times you're just hit with a wall of synth. Yep. Uh, you want, like, a really wide mix. Like, a wide production. So I think, like, the use of adding a ton of vocal layers in for that kind of stuff and the use of so many samples and all these little like 
tiny little audible percussive like sounds clicks. thrown yeah, in. Yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, just do so much to like feel like you're listening to a really spatial song. Uh, I thought it was really fun. Uh, the production here is by people that I'm sure Therese is probably pretty familiar with. Uh, Caesar and Louis. Um, who I don't know. I can take a look at some of their more popular credits, but are very relevant. Yeah, very relevant K-pop producers. Mm-hmm. Um, as well as a, every, a, <laughs> every group under the sun. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's no point in being listing. I mean, they got everything. No, it's like all of them. NCT, Red Velvet, Shiny, Super Junior, <laughs> Got Seven, Girls Everglow. Generation. And... <laughs> yeah, Monster X, Yana. <laughs> uh, yeah, super, super yes. iconic uh, production <laughs> team there. Yeah. So, uh, very fun. I like it. Therese, would you like to go next? I feel like uh, Alex got way more into the instrumentals than I ever could. I was yeah. over here like, is this future bass? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> is, future bass? Yeah. <laughs> is this future bass? Yeah. Um, very deep mirror. Very, very oh, cute. Oh, God. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. No, no. <laughs> no, I love this. I can't this escape shirt. it. I, I can't escape it. <laughs> Not the deep mirror shit. We got to stay current, guys. We can't be, we can't be a stupid millennials over here uh <laughs> but um i did really like it i really like uh jin soul's voice at times it kind of reminded me of nyan's voice but in a m- much more like deeper sort of um how do i explain it like a little more western use i don't even know mm. i the way i attributed her voice in texture is it's similar to a serrated knife like when you're cutting bread uh because it's got it's got like it's very sharp. It can slice through the music, but it it's okay. also got some texture to it. I got you. Um, okay. Yeah, I really like it. I love the water dancing. I loved um, water is wet, and uh, I didn't realize I would not have realized that she was associated with fish until someone said that she was associated with fish. So, yeah, I I like it. Uh, I like the beat. Oh, I was going to say um, the rapping took me out of it. I really? wasn't a huge oh. fan of the rapping. Um, Interesting. Is she a rapper? Or does she do like the voiceovers that I hear in Luna songs? What 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 is the the primary use of her <laughs> voice in their songs? What is her primary function? What is she? Yeah, what is your primary? <laughs> what, which android function, which function <laughs> does is she? Jin Soul? make oh my god singer okay singer. she has okay. a really great singing voice so that makes me happy cool well i don't think i could say much more because i think therese and alex uh obviously covered all the bases on this one however um i definitely love the energy of the song i think she was able to carry it really well and I was a little concerned because the song is very, like, punchy and very aggressive, which, again, Future Bass, I feel like, is typically. Um, so I almost thought for maybe, for an instance, I thought maybe her voice would get lost in that sort of sound just because it is very front-facing. And typically, you would need somebody who is a strong vocalist that is confident enough to take on a challenge like that. Um, and I think I feel like Jin Soul definitely did a really great job of not only proving that, but I feel like ex- expanding my expectations of what she was capable of doing. So to me, I'm very curious to see, like, again, in I believe she's an odd eye circle, which is the subunit. Uh, I'm curious to see where her vocals fit in that grouping as well as with Luna. Um, she really had a very powerful voice. Um, so I was very curious to see how um, how it fits in all, all of these places, but um, really enjoyed the instrumental. Uh, I thought it was also um, a really well shot music video. I think the cuts were like really well put together, um, like the large pan shots of her, like along with the dancers were really sick. Um, I think some of the shots with like obviously her incorporation of her animal, um, I think was also very sick. Like just the shot of her like walking through and seeing all of those, um, 
like fish tanks and stuff. I thought that was a really cool setup as well too. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought it was uh, very, very fun, very lively, uh, and I feel like it represents her very well. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how she fits all together in Luna and Odd Eye Circle, but yeah, very nice. Um, all right, it looks like there is uh, some chat saying that uh, some of them, uh, I guess there's another version. So uh, there is a second version of this MV where Heejin raps instead. Ah, very nice. Did we hear Heejin rap? No, not. I don't think in this version. My chat can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, or I mean, like in general, have we heard? No, we oh, have okay. not heard Heejin rap yet. Mm. Okay. Uh, it says the version featuring Heejin was originally meant for Kim Lip, but Heejin and Hasio, uh also recorded the part, ending with Heejin's version getting released. Okay, and everyone's confirming. Okay. No, not yet. All right. All right. Cool. What is well, itchy pity. Well, cherry time. Yeah. Who is? <laughs> I keep seeing a uh, Digi Petty as well. Santa, if you want to give us some answers, I'm very curious. Um, and then uh, MLQ Day says, "Fun fact: Singing in the Rain was the was most of the Luna's members' uh, favorite song or favorite solo." Oh, the music video production team, Digi Petty, got it. Oh, okay. Thank you, thank you, everyone. All right, cool. Well, we're gonna get in. Chody is that is that her name? Uh, Pretty much cherry just or pronounced or like cherry. It's pretty oh, it's much cherry. Okay. Cherry. Okay. cherry. All right, cool. Purple and white. And this song is called Love Cherry Motion. Let's go. All right. That was Cherry and their song Love Cherry Motion. Let's go. Very nice. Um, cherries. I think I might have a theory on <laughs> Cherry's song. So obviously Already. the song feels very like i'm sure y'all have had cherries before but sometimes they're mm. sweet and they're also a little tart you know and i feel like the switch up in the song little tart you know so i, I only get I, the sweet cherries i don't okay know. well excuse me you know <laughs> i'm just saying uh but no i i thought the song was really great definitely the switch up was a surprise but i like that they um incorporated it twice um, because I think it breaks up the song in a really unique way, but I also love the kind of like lighthearted cutesy sort of feel of like the choruses. Um, I thought those were really nice. Um, but probably my favorite part of the song was that second like switch up. Uh, I like they incorporate it. I know we talk about it a lot, the, the Phrygian scale, but it has that sort of like Egyptian esque feel to it. And I think that worked out really well and just kind of complemented that last that last switch up very well um but probably my favorite part of the song was actually the pre-choruses um those were really beautiful um and i think the transition from that really like great musical tonality of the pre-choruses into that chorus it was just really great um i think it gives you that sort of like complete feeling of like um you know again where you're getting that I don't want to say unease, but just like that little bit of odd feeling of the pre-chorus, and then I think you kind of level out in in the chorus. Uh, I think that's a really cool musical trope that they use in the song, um, and I think her vocals were really nice. Um, I like that again has that uh, bubblegum sweet side of it, but then again has that sort of like grittier, like little darker tonalities in some portions a little bit um which is really nice to see as well too so i think there's a lot of versatility in the song so i think this one took me by surprise the most but i would say this is amongst my favorites as well i like the the vibe change uh that was great and i think her vocals were really uh stand out at least to me as well too so yeah i thought this was uh this is great kudos uh what is the there's like a very bouncy sort of sound in the background and it's associated with a lot of the Christian horse girl music we've been listening to <laughs> and I can't place it, but that's the instrument I want to give her. <laughs> the Christian horse girl. I'm going to say bouncy synth as opposed to the other synths. <laughs> um, 
my god. But it was it was very Christian horse girl music at at, at the beginning and then we got we got a fun little breakdown and um I I really liked it. It wasn't too long, it wasn't too crazy. It was uh just right in my eyes. Um I like her voice as well. Uh these are some goaded singers is what I'm realizing. It's not just yeah. one or two, it's all of all 12 probably. <laughs> But I think she has a very like girl next door voice, mm. and um, I put uh, I added all of Sissy's notes: cherry, purple, white, um, fruit bat, uh, world slash time traveler, and I added mirrors. There's lots of mirrors. There were a lot of mirrors, yes. Um, which probably attributed to the traveling. And bouncy synth pop. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, choreograph. Um, cool. Nice. I also like this a lot. I I swear I've heard the chorus of this before, but I didn't know about that like breakdown drop part, instrumental mm -hmm. change up. Um I don't think I've heard it before. Uh it caught me by surprise. So if I did I I forgot about it. Uh, it was very fun. I liked that they kind of teased you with it a little bit on the first one, where it was like very yeah. short yeah, and yeah. very abrupt. And the second one, it, it comes back and hits you again, but then they sort of extend it and move forward with that kind of uh, like the 808 drums and like the kind of heavier instrumentation. And then it has like a really smooth transition to get back out of it into where they, they, they yeah. kind of pull all the instruments and then it slowly, you get a little bit of like a like an emptier, mostly vocals only kind of introduction back into the regular instrumental. Um, I thought it was really well done. It was very fun. Um, producers on this one are uh, also very popular producers we should be familiar with at this point. Olipop um, and Haley Aitken, who look like they are uh, both associated with the production team, The Kennel, mm. um, who uh, I, the credits between the two of them are extensive in K-pop. They are very, very highly credited producers. Um, fun. I Dang. like it. Also, lyrics and stuff. Uh, lyrics are, are from Monetary, so Monetary also working with a, a hand in this one as well. Very nice. Um, it looks like you've also said uh, Haley Aitken. Uh, she produced iconic songs such as Twice as Feel Special and Red Velvet's Zinzalabim, which I did go back and recently listen to. I think it's I think it's good now. Kind of like goes it hard. Now. Yeah. Kind of goes hard. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think Ollie Pop's on some Zalabim too. Oh, okay. Very nice. And Caesar and Louis. Wow. Mm. We're cr we're crushing it tonight. We'd love to see it um They're everywhere i feel like sana put it best uh they said my sweet bubblegum side uh ain't me my club side and i feel like that probably is <laughs> probably uh probably very representative i'd argue so um uh, all right cool well, well that was the last of the uh odd eye circle yeah. um subunit for tonight we are on to the why why by why Girls yeah. With uh, why, Eve. Why, why, why? <laughs> Starting off. All right. Eve. Eve. Eve with new. Eve is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go. All right. This was Eve and uh, their song, New. Very nice. Very nice. What are your thoughts? Alex, would you like to start? Sure. Um, I was trying to sort of grasp, like, what this genre of music yeah. is. Yeah. Same. Um, I I'm looking at the my credits page reference and it's categorized as Soultronica, huh? Which I've never heard of before. I've, also I've never, never heard. heard. I mean, I've never heard the term Soultronica. It makes a ton of sense. Like I can figure out what it means and it lines up. I was thinking it was sort of just a like neutro synth pop kind of like track a neo soul. That yeah, that's what I was. I mean, thinking. this is yeah. very. This is like something I would hear my mom listening to, but also something Lady Gaga would do. Ooh. So I was thinking like 80s, yeah, right. late, early 90s. This to me is like, pop. 
like a tier s tier driving music uh Ooh, that's like the okay. vibes i get from this like a like a late night drive in the city this is like one. yeah the so the song for it for me um i just think that this is a like the song felt really fast like it went by really quickly it's not that sh- short but i don't know that it it's very fun um i don't know much about eve is she considered one of like the like stronger dancers in the group? Because I feel like the little bits of choreo we got, I felt like she, I don't know, just seemed like she was a really good dancer. I know all of Luna are good dancers. I've seen some of their dance practices and stuff, but man, she looked like she was killing it. Oh, main she's dancer. a main dancer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. That I feel. You feel seen. I feel seen. <laughs> I feel heard. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really know how much I have to say about it. I mean, like, like the vocals were solid. Um, I was not... I didn't really pick anything specific that was really wowing me about the vocals. I really liked the use of, like, that either pitch sample or, like, vocal... Like, mm-hmm. male sample. It's a vocal. They were using. It sounded like a vocoder or some... some like yeah, vocoder I, I don't know. Down. Yeah. Right, I don't know if it's her or if it's just like you know someone from the production team or something, but whatever uh, that implementation I thought was really cool, just as like a, a juxtaposition uh, part of the song. Um, but then her vocals at the end, I thought, like came around and wowed me because the, the, for the most part it was like kind of just chilling, vibing, casual, and then the the vocals uh, came around, and I thought they were very solid um the production here are people we're familiar with again from their catalog we have caesar and louis uh mm. working on the composition and arrangement and brooke toya who i'm not familiar with um but i will look up right now and uh Jaden jung on mm. lyrics and we know Jaden jung well we do luna orbits no Jaden jung okay uh very relevant to the uh wh- who does what company did Jaden Jung start didn't he uh someone in chat will get me what is Jaden working company wise with now Artemis Modhouse okay Mod- Modhouse and Artemis and I- I'm assuming Triple S and stuff too right thank you mm Okay. Uh, yeah, he he becomes very relevant in the in the future of Luna. Um, and oh, Brokoya... is he the guy that had like the 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 big plans for Luna, or like a whole storyline for them, or is that I someone else? Think so. I'm not super familiar. I remember hearing about one particular guy that would just like he was like creating. The group lore. Huh. Interesting. Uh, okay. <laughs> looking into one of the main producers on here, besides Caesar and Louis, uh, Brooke Toya, um, hasn't really worked on too much credited here, but funnily, like one of them, one of the only things I'm, I'm uh, recognizing off of her credits is a song from uh, the girl group Majors, which is a hmm. a group that has essentially fizzled out and is very very unknown and i'm surprised to see their name here um i'm sure maybe like up one or two people in chat no majors but uh interesting i do yeah i was gonna say i i've heard of i've i've heard of spit majors. it out spit it out was the song my song i have no idea brain broke if Youthful knows, Youthful is the one who recommended it. I just it, said so. it. I just said it. Spit, oh, it, spit out. it out. Oh, I thought you were telling me to spit it out. <laughs> no, no, no. You gotta be more specific. I'm sorry. The song called Spit It Out. There you go. Great. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, <laughs> no, a different song. Okay. Anyway, there's here nor there. Um, I guess I'll go next. Um, I thought the song was very interesting. I think I 
if I'm not mistaken, I think I'm pretty sure it was useful said in the chat that the song will grow on them and I feel the same exact way. Like this is a song that I feel like I don't know if I don't know if necessarily like there's a lot of cool elements and I feel like she definitely had a unique vocal tone that again all of them really do have but I, I would argue her voice stood has stood out to me the most so far um just because it has a very unique like mid-range like mid to low range tone that I feel like some of the other girls in Luna thus far haven't really had so um really enjoyed that um the instrumentation was very interesting I think that's probably where my brain is like missing a little bit of the disconnect I don't think that it is necessarily a bad song um but I do think that they're like it almost feels like it's like it's almost feels like it's on a different like beat a little bit like off time just like a slight bit I don't know if maybe that's just my brain messing with me a little bit but it does seem like it's a little off time or like off beat a little bit um so that was a little bit of getting used to but I think overall uh I thought the I thought the uniqueness of the instrumentation the uniqueness of her vocals were really what kind of encapsulated me about the song um I also love that she has I would argue a addiction to crane machines because I also have a very strong addiction to crane machines uh so I feel like cool also not cool but like totally about that um but yeah, I, I agree with Alex. I think this is definitely one of those songs that if you threw it on, having all the windows down, and like you're just cruising in the city like on a nice evening, I feel like this is like the perfect song to put on there. And it will definitely be on like one of those cruising playlists that I have put a lot of the K-pop songs that we feel like fit well on that sort of playlist. I'll definitely be throwing this song on there for sure. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought it was very solid. I'm I'm curious to see what uh eve has next um as as we go on uh the stitcher twitter gonna... said did you notice the claw machine had members i did i thought that was very unique uh i thought that was a cool Ooh, it was I a cool like plot that. it was a cool like uh plot element of it and i'm sure obviously if you are somebody who has followed luna in the different members and i think it gives you a little bit more of uh gives you more of a perspective on that so very nice Therese, do you have any comments on this song? Uh, I have a question. Did she happen to train at SM? Anyone? Because I would say she has a very SM sounding voice. <laughs> but maybe that's just me getting lazy and unable to distinguish the many textures that I've been experiencing through this synth wave ish. Kind Everyone's of saying no. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not. I'm not seeing. That's what I got. <laughs> yeah, I'm lazy. I I don't know how to classify it. It's it is unique. Um, but I think the voices are starting to blend together. Um, at this point in the night, so yeah, uh, Soultronica. That's pretty cool. No, wait, that was the last one. <laughs> yeah, that was this one. That's this one. Yeah, that's this uh, one. <laughs> I'm like confusing my notes now. Oh, I'm no. getting tired. I didn't uh so we're we're in Eden now, right? But like what is the what is how what makes it Eden? Is it just called Eden? Or is it meant to be like a a garden? <laughs> a garden of all of the lovely things. I I assume I'm assuming it, it has to be referencing the actual story of Eden, right? Because the apple. like the, all the apples. Mm -hmm. She Jeez. is Eve. Okay, that's well, that, interesting. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Bible, yes. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> okay, so this is the... In this MV, Eve's, or Eve is rejecting Eden by eating her fruit, the apple. So, oh, so she wants to leave. Okay, so I got that. I wrote in my notes um, some recklessness where it seemed like she wanted to go out. She was hanging out in the subway with all the hooligans. She was doing golf on top of a roof, like uh, hitting her stuffed animals off. So lots of rebellious vibes, which I was confused. I'm like, aren't we in Eden? Wouldn't you want to be here? <laughs> but um, I feel like we're doing such a disservice to ourselves too by like not doing the the subunit 
music videos Songs, like yeah. right after we finish the the members because we're probably missing out on so much no no i've got it all these, uh, got okay. it all right, right. <laughs> all right in wait till next memory. monday <laughs> come join us next monday see if we remember any of this shit <laughs> infallible I'll, will, add this, uh, I'll add this to your google drive to your google yeah Teresa will compare notes yeah. she'll uh rewrite the luna lore as we go yeah <laughs> i'll be like no no in this music video she was holding <laughs> a cake and therefore <laughs> i'm fully expecting Teresa to do like a like a full-on like eddie burback type video you know where she's just like <laughs> She's like, Luna, okay, here we go. <laughs> this is the Luna lore. And then just rolls out like a fucking like board and just says, oh, Here's all that, the information I have. Was Love that Vivi that they were they were hanging out with? Yes. Okay. That is correct. Um I did notice that as well. Cool, cool. It is a lot of info. No, I do prefer having the individual members to separate first and then bring together. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I uh I I'm I kind of have no particular thoughts on the song. I think it's nice. I think you you could loop it. You could drive to it, but I don't know if I'll go out and look for this one this particular track. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm not going to lie. I thought Nigel's place said Morbius and I was like, "Oh god, not that movie." God it's a good movie. Are you sure? <laughs> I think uh, I was like attributing yeah, okay. her voice similarly to Taeyeon's, so that's where I was getting the SM sound <laughs> from. <laughs> oh god. Mighty Morbin time. I can't do this. I still can't really like place it. It's hard. That's no. Fair. <laughs> 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 no 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 you're gonna have the chat no <laughs> chat right. no i'm gonna take a bathroom break before we do the next we're one. gonna start doing the sounds spray good, the good. spray bottle you know like <laughs> do guys don't what make else? us break out the spray bottle you know what okay. else we got what are some uh do you think these um the individual profiles for each of these members is useful or do you think it's more about how they mix together for me and how the i'm asking chat oh okay sun me interesting sun me. huh really we do have three members left and chu is next that is correct how you guys oh, no, doing i went we'll, tired we'll, so early we'll we'll ask chat how's chat chat how are you guys doing i hope y'all are excited for we will be trying to split up our time very well. Uh, as if you didn't join us already, uh, we will be doing Lucy on Wednesday. So very excited. Um, Kaylee has been uber stoked for Lucy. Uh, they have shown me some great B-sides, which I'm very excited to... I have already listened to, but I'm excited to get into your title tracks. Um, so very pumped about that because uh, Lucy has been very sick so i i'm pumped i'm pumped um nigel's place so good this has been been fun well thanks for joining uh thanks for hanging out uh like i said uh come join us on discord that is the best place to find out what we are doing next all that sort of stuff um i think therese is lucy one stream yep all right cool it's well, 13 songs hey yo so we're, we're gonna push it but we're gonna push I it. I don't know. I think I think we can do it. We can do it. Yeah. <laughs> we got it. We got it. All right. Very, Maybe very say sick. Eve has a chewy sounding voice, similar to the girls of Stacy. Mm. Okay. Speaking of chewy. <laughs> chewy. Chewy. <laughs> now, let's get into a chewy song. Oh god. All right. <laughs> I think I'm going to have a heart attack, which is the song. So let's go. Woo! Also, Zone says this is the lesbian anthem. All right. That was Chew Heart Attack if you're joining us tonight. Very nice. What a song. What a song. What a song. Therese, you want to you wanna cook? Yeah, sure. 
I knew this song. It's one of the few songs that I did know before coming on this stream. Um, it's a classic for Luna. It's an excellent song. I'm, I don't know if I realized it was a solo, <laughs> but I realize it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love Chu's voice. I think Chu has the the closest to rock star level vocals i think it's it's obvious she was gonna be one of the most popular members because they gave her one of the best songs um i just love it i love the 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 diddly doos and the diddly dees i love and the, the boops and even the bops <laughs> I feel like oh, as, the bops are my favorite. I feel like as we go on, Therese starts to we start to see a, we start to hit a plateau in Teresa's mind where she starts to run out of words and just adds beeps and bops and she's just the closer like... the closer we get to three hours, the more slop you guys get from us. Yeah. This is it's like uh, being drunk on stream, but not really. Of our jazz. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Who doesn't love this song? Um, we love this. Song. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll pick up where Teresa said. Um, <laughs> I also have heard this song a million times. This is the only um, pre. This is the only like solo, pre debut album that I have, that I own, and for some reason I own two of them. I don't even remember why. Wow. Um, I don't think I meant to buy two of them. I think I just bought one and then didn't know I had one and bought another one when I saw it. Um, you know, collections sometimes get so crazy you don't even know what you have. That's, yeah. Um, That's fair. I love this song. I think it is... The video accompanying is really, really fun. I think it suits Chu's personality really well. It, like, it gives you a little window into her personality, who uh, I could talk about Chu herself forever. She, I'm, I'm going into this series very open, but currently, as it stands, Chu is and has been my bias for quite a while, just because of... Um, well, at some point, I'm sure you'll learn about her YouTube show that has really like solidified her as being like star level personality. It is okay. so funny. I have to watch. She it. has a, a show called "She Can Do It," and oh, it's just basically uh, so her do, doing a bunch of like trying a bunch of things. Um, and it's like a lot of like she'll do conservation efforts, and she'll do oh. like recycling stuff, and she'll do yeah. all sorts of cool stuff. Um, but her personality is like she's meant to be a, a star, and this song gives like the same vibe. Like she, it just sells her really well. She's uh, super strong vocals. Uh, the song itself, like production instrumental wise, is really fun. The video does a good job of, uh, I guess, like having that. I I'm assuming it's lore, which I don't really pay much attention to, but um, I assume it is a good video for lore because it's so like involved, intertwined with eve and like the other stuff that we saw from her video um and you just get to hear chu rip on vocals obviously she's uh i would say i i don't know people who are more versed opinions but i would say she's definitely one of the the strongest vocalists in luna she's Ooh, yeah. a power power vocalist uh, I see one of the chat MLQ Day said Chu and Eve want to leave Eden for reasons. Heart reasons, reasons. <laughs> we'll have to find. We'll have to find out what those reasons are. Um, Love <laughs> lesbian <I>, anthem. <laughs> yes, I know. I was being facetious. Um, <laughs> I thought this was great. I think this one is amongst my favorites that we've heard tonight. I would probably put this in like easy top five without a doubt. Um, I think the instrumentation is like really fun, really upbeat. And I think it mimics her like upbeat, like candid, like fun energy very well. Um, I loved her usage of like a lot of like descending and ascending vocal melodies like she's really just like a true champion of that and i feel like in this song specifically you can really hear her like stretch all of her vocal cords which is awesome uh i love that there was a key change i love key changes i feel like they're always fun and always make the song a little bit more interesting um and i feel like the song is no different from that 
Um, as well as that, she just, like, in terms of, like, her music video persona, and I imagine very similarly to just her persona as a person, she just seems, like, very, like, warm and bubbly and, like, inviting. And that was, like, the first, like, instinct I was like, oh, man, you know what? I like her a lot already. Like, there's just something very, like, there's something really, like, inherently, like, innocent about her. And, like, you know, like, just the way that she, like, presents herself. So, um, really, really enjoyed that a lot. Um, as well as that, um, I think the accompaniment in terms of the instrument instrumentals uh, did a really great job of highlighting, like, her skills as a vocalist as well. Um, as I believe Ale both Alex and Therese mentioned, I've, it it does really complement her really well. And I think whoever decided to do the production for this song really knew that this Thank song you. was going to suit her super well. So Ollie Pop and Haley Aitken again. Hey, let's go, let's go. Um, um but... didn't Chu also invent that like uh that heart thing? Oh, the like the that blow like heart? the no like the bite heart egg yolk oh, heart. heart thing? Yeah, yeah. Didn't she, didn't she invent that? Egg I've seen a lot of the heart the hearts from from Chu. Yes, the Chu heart. Okay, there are so many funny like gifs and memes of her. Wait, like she... either from the show or from like music shows and stuff. Or... You start with you start with a circle in there. You bite. Oh, that's cute. make it a heart. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, Brandon, Therese, that Brandon was <laughs> new new <laughs> Brandon. Yeah, do uh... it, do it, Brandon. You gotta start with a circle. Okay, yeah. start with a circle, then <laughs> new Brandon ending Very fairy cute. unlocked. There you go. <laughs> See everyone everyone uh could do it and be extra cute. If you ever want to ask for something and break out your egg yo, do a chew heart. <laughs> I like that. Well, yeah, it's a good vibe. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, and I also love the music video. I can understand why. I can understand why it's a lesbian anthem. Uh, it totally makes sense now. You could take that. Part. Um, that's all I'm gonna say. Shout out to I them. love all the uh, I love the clips of all the male idols doing the the chew heart. <laughs> yeah, who did the blow up heart? There was a blow up heart, right? Or are you like? <laughs> I don't know, but I like. I know it. I've seen that. I like it. That's a Therese special now. <laughs> no, 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 I don't want to take. I don't want to take I, credit for the hard work these idols do. I appreciate. Their hearts. <laughs> I appreciate any idol pushing the envelope of how you can make a heart in 2024. That's you still fair. said Aang? Like, from the Avatar? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I think, like... Did the Avatar um, create ending fairy mode? No, oh, God. <laughs> lore, lore. <laughs> oh, uh, Sarah says, Chu assumes everyone is dating until oh. proven otherwise. <laughs> Ignore me. The, the, um, yeah, I knew I knew you full meant, but I just oh, want gotcha, to gotcha. let Therese cook, you know? <laughs> Avatar Aang created ending fairy hearts. That would be our clip. That that yeah. would be the clip that gets shared around. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, we're gonna move oh. on to the next one. This is Go On, uh, and their song One and Only. Uh, very exciting. Um, Woo. all right, cool. Let's uh, let's go. Uh oh, Exodia says, uh, love the clip of her thinking the two guys with a cake were celebrating as a date. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. What the hell? All right, that was Go On, one and only. If you're hanging out, thanks. Um, I thought this song was very interesting. Uh, I was not. Again, very similarly to all of the other Luna girls that we have talked about so far. Um, I feel like this one was the most interesting, not only, I think, vocally, but as well as that, I think instrumentally, this one was very interesting. There was a lot of usage of, like, weird, and I mean weird in a good way, like panning. There was, like, a lot of cool, like, different things that you could hear mixed in with the song. So uh, I'm glad that I was listening to it with headphones on because I feel like maybe I wouldn't have gotten the same effect if I like listened to this in my car or something. Um, but I thought it was very interesting. I think uh, Go On has a very unique vocal tone and evil, even more so, I feel like her rap tone is even more interesting. Um, 
so I was very curious about this song. Um, I think the instrumentation was very nice as well, too. Um, I like how it also kind of keeps within a similar sort of vein of having unique panning. There were some cool parts where you could hear some, like, different synths popping up and, like, different instrumentation mixed in with the song. Um, and I think it was, like, really well balanced in that aspect. Um, but, yeah, I, I enjoyed her, like, rapping verses in this song. I think she really did a great job. Um, but I also got to give her a lot of credit. I know we joke a lot on the channel about like how, you know, rappers are also very good singers. And I feel like this is in a similar sort of pattern, um, which is always good to see. Um, but yeah, I think overall this was very, very solid. I probably put this up like middle high tier. I really enjoyed this one a lot. I would like to give it more listen just because I feel like there is a lot of like unique textures that I got in the first go around but i'm sure if i give this a listen again i might not be able to pick out the same things that i gave a listen to in the first time through so um it feels like it gives me a lot of repeat value which i love to hear so um yeah uh, i thought she was very unique curious how she'll fit in the um like subunit slash luna material yeah i um i definitely need more lessons with this i haven't heard it before um, I got really distracted because I, I, I felt like I got distracted from the chorus because mm -hmm. the pre-chorus with the panning, especially the pre-chorus that had like the, the rapping with the panning, yeah, I yeah. felt like was such a, uh, a takeaway, like, um, like a highlight of the song that I feel like it coming right before the chorus kind of made me forget the chorus a little bit. Um, which is fine. I think I just need more lessons. Uh, something I did really like about the production the instrumental is this really fun little popcorn synth that goes on throughout like the chorus and a lot yeah. of the song. That was really mm -hmm. fun. Uh, just like a really like kind of high pitched, clicky. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but I'm sure if you listen closely enough, you can you can hear it. Um, that's really fun. Um, I don't have much else to say. Uh, I can talk about the production goes to Darren Ellis Smith and Tammy and Fusino, who I don't think we've seen yet on a song from them. Hmm. Uh, but it looks like uh, Darren at least has worked on notably Lionheart from a girl's generation and uh, plenty mm. of other songs, but I think that is probably the biggest one. Um, but this is the only uh, Luna credits it looks like they have. Oh. Very nice. Therese? You know, I wasn't sure what to expect. I, out of Luna in general. Um, but I am noticing, like, we started with a lot of, like, really cool instrumental tracks. And now we've reached, like, synth heaven. And uh, yeah. This is now the hip hop synth heaven of <laughs> of the tracks we've been listening to. Um, definitely crunchy, mostly from the percussion. But I think Gohan's voice actually adds to that crunchiness because it sounds almost like piercing. Um, and you could take that as you will. Uh, negative, positive connotations, whatever. I think I because when I started like trying to profile the voice in my head. I put like breathy sort of indifferent and then I realized I was the exact same profile I gave Hyunjin earlier. So I went back to listen to Hyunjin's vocals, which was, uh, I realized on the track that we did was a lot smoother, softer. And the other track she did her B side is a lot more upbeat. So now I can hear different sides of their voices altogether. Mm. Um, Hyunjin's voice actually tends to be on the flatter range, while Goan's voice tends to be on the sharper range. So it's like, they're definitely different, but the the overall profile, I guess, was similar to me. Um, I really like this song, and I think it goes well with Goan's voice, but I'm curious how Goan's voice will rub on me after hearing them in their units and in the group, because it is very piercing. Like it, it'll get through. She does like a breathy voice in a lot of the chorus here because she knows the effect that it has. So <laughs> I'm curious um, how it'll ring into their um, ensemble vocals. 
um, or how I don't know it grows into their sound. That'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah. Uh, not much else to say. I will remember her though as the Crunchy Princess. That's <laughs> certified Crunchy. Canon certified crunchy. in my head. Yeah. Love to Lots see it. of snare sounds. All right, cool. Well, I think we're going to get into the last one. Uh, unfortunately, as CC said that, uh, sadly, go on and VV don't get, excuse me, don't get many lines. So, well, maybe hmm. they're the secret weapons. They could be, yeah. All right, so the last one is we have Olivia Hie, uh, and this is Egotist, uh, featuring Jin Let me. Let me ask. I I know she goes by Haiju now, which is her actual name. Um, are we wrong for referring to her as Olivia Hay in the context of this old stuff? Like, should we be Haiju? Okay. Sorry, should we be referring to her as Haiju across the board, okay. or are we fine re referring to her as Olivia Hay? Looks looks like it might be fine. Oh, <laughs> okay. Never mind. Let us know. Well, yeah, let us know. <laughs> we'll figure it we'll out. We'll call her. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey, for short. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it says. Uh, it says, it says it should be fine during, uh, before leaving BBC. So uh, yeah. I, okay. That's I figured. I figured while while she was referred to as Olivia Hay, we would refer to her then, and then post Blackberry Creative Luna, we when she makes the name switch, we would adjust accordingly. But I think noted, right? Noted. We're all aware yeah. of the name change. Cool. All right. All right. Cool. Well, this one is Egotist, featuring uh, I believe it was Jin Jin Sol. I was correct. Very nice. Very nice. Um, I guess I'll start. Uh, this one is my favorite of tonight. I feel this one was just like super high energy. Um, I really loved, uh, I really loved her voice. I feel like, uh, you full pointed it out. She's really got this great, like, mid to low range, like, tone. I feel like it is very well represented in this song. But I will also say that, like, her higher register is really, really nice. Um, I, I think to me, like, kind of, I, I feel like she has such a, you like, a full range that I feel like this song really utilized it well. Um, and I think it does combine a lot of the elements of some of the other previous Luna tracks that we've, heard, like, soloist tracks that we've heard tonight, where, you know, I could definitely point out in terms of, like, there's definitely a little bit more mature elements. Um, I think like the the synth uh sort of style um gives me a little bit of ironically enough, obviously the future of the song, Jin Soul. Um, I feel like it reminds me a lot of her song as well, um, in terms of like that stronger electro pop sort of sound to it. Um, I really liked the chorus. It has this sort of like like full effect to it that I think works out really well in this song. Um, as well as that, I just think that overall, I think the song suited her very well. Um, I think it was very similarly to choose heart attack. I feel like this one is another song that was well written for her and shows off, you know, some of the best attributes of her. Um, but yeah, this is definitely amongst my, my favorites for sure. I think this one was really, really well put together. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see I'm excited what, to see what she's going to be doing in uh, not only the subunit, but obviously Luna as a whole, too. So, great track. Fantastic, actually. I will join you. This is uh, in my top three for the night, for sure. I It's probably in my top two. Oh, I have to think about my uh, top a little bit, but um, I love this song. I have heard this before. Um I, I guess it's electro pop technically. Uh, I'm seeing that's like what that's I what the, the genre is saying. It's electro pop, but I really like that 
wacky instrumental part where we got like that um really like off rhythm it it was like a um like a future bass drop a little future bass drop yeah agreed um which a lot of times future bass plays with like weird time signatures and weird rhythms so that's and like obviously like the big synths that were there like the the walls of noise are, are very future based so i thought that was fun um i think that's what originally it, it drawn me to this song so much but now going back and um hearing it in the context of the rest of the songs and a little more like i guess analytical on it um there's a lot of it's so noisy like it's such a loud song yeah um i don't really know how to quantify that other than it just feels really loud the whole time and when you start like trying to listen for the instrumental and like listen to the instruments and like picking things out there's like not that much actually going on in the song everything is just dumped with reverb like there is <laughs> yeah. so much reverb and like echo on everything um that everything just sounds really really big and i think the like the synth choices were obviously part of it they were super super aggressive and uh like hard and then i love that whistle sample yeah something about that yeah. whistle sample is so catchy Agreed. um all in all I, I don't know i think it's catchy i think it's interesting i think that like little future bassy thing is is a, a fun shake up um, I've always uh, been a pretty big uh, Heju fan. She definitely <laughs> like gives me the most vibes of her representative animal of a wolf. Mm, like agree. She, yeah. Um, yeah. Fun. Very, very, very fun. Therese. Um, I got kind of got the same things that you did, Alex. I was like, oh, this is like electro pop. It's got a lot of sound to it. Um, but honestly, the most interesting part of the song isn't the instrumentals. Um, or I do like her vocals, uh, but I wouldn't say they're the focus at all because they're at the same level as the instrumentals. I think the focus was like the production, or rather, the use of space in parts of this song like there was some interesting staggering going on yeah where you could hear like i don't know it, it was like either leveling or like just just adding a little bit of air to the track um so that was pretty interesting uh it was there was a lot going on it didn't sound bad but uh, yeah there wasn't much happening at the same time <laughs> at least melodically um i do really like her voice i think it kind of reminds me of like um like a regina george kind of like mean girl voice mm, okay. <laughs> um but uh i think it goes well with a more, more sultry tone like it starts with at the beginning um it does kind of drown her out in the middle middle of the song but i, I think... like all the breakdowns that happen too sorry i was gonna say uh, to kind of contribute to that i think that her having a little bit of like a lower vocal register probably also uh maybe say. contributes yeah. to yeah. her not really cutting through the instrumental as much as some other I'm members sure. right but um i have a feeling i'm not gonna be the biggest fan of luna's rap <laughs> oh. because i haven't heard much rap that's really like blown me away <laughs> that's fair yeah. um i i think it's also just like this style of rap of this time of k-pop it's it's a certain they use a certain tone most yeah. of the time um that i'm not a fan of but uh i appreciate that it's on beat <laughs> for the most part um and it's creating some interesting beats and in a lot of these songs and some boobs Beeps and some and boops. boops yeah i heard the boops loud and clear i guess if i had to pick my three based off of like subunit ooh, that's tough um i think for like one from each subunit one from each subunit yeah like if i had to pick ooh. a member from one from each subunit that i enjoyed the most 
I probably would say... I'd probably say I enjoyed Hyunjin's Around You from from uh, Luna One Third, uh, but I will give an honorable mention to Yojin. I love that music video, and I love her like very cutesy sort of tone. So I'll give her an honorable mention. Um, I think in terms of Odd Eye Circle, this one's a clear shot. I feel like I gotta go with my girl Kim Lip. That song absolutely fire love eclipse um yyxy that one's gonna be tough i feel like th that one is stacked <laughs> that one's so difficult um i think i'm gonna go this is tough i think i'm gonna go with chew heart attack i think that was the song that i knew immediately mm -hmm. i was like gonna love so i think i'm gonna have to choose heart attack by chew so those would be my three per per sub unit um, mine's pretty easy. I'm going to go with, uh, Yojin's Kiss Later. Nice. From, uh, I, I, honorably from Luna One Third, the, the Slash. The herself. Slash. <laughs> um, from Odd Eye Circle, I'm definitely going Kim Lip with Eclipse. Oh, interesting. Okay. And I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna flip flop on, on, where I was at prior to tonight's stream and go with uh Heju's egoist as my wow. YY, YY mm. pick. I like it. I like it. Therese. Okay. Um the eating girls, I gotta pick two. I loved it. I hey, think let's she... go. Like and uh, yeah, I've got some bias in this because I already like the song, but even hearing everyone else's like voices and everyone else's tracks i do think it's a standout of this unit um for odd eye circle i guess Ooh, i think i'd do gin soul Ooh, i nice really choice. liked her her serrated knife like voice <laughs> um and the future base <laughs> that's fair yeah um hmm. uh one third is harder for me I guess it'd be Heejin. Oh, there was a lot of like, there was physical color and then also musical color in the yeah, song. That's fair. Um, more so than what we saw from the other girls. I think they were much more in in a particular genre or like focusing in on a particular feel. And yeah, Heejin's was very much like the introduction to Luna. It's good. Some, some very opinion. good choices. These are uh, all our opinions. Yeah, of course. Of course. Well, that wraps up part one of our Luna deep dive. We will be doing, I think, at least four parts. So uh, all of the music in this stream will be cut out. Uh, so if you do want to watch the unfiltered stream, you can go check that out on Patreon. It is a dollar a month, so we try to make it as cheap as possible. So go check that out. That will be up immediately. If you wind up showing up to stream late, uh, you can watch it there. Um, Wednesday, we will be doing part one and probably the only part of Lucy. Uh, so I'm very excited to get into that on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So come join that if you do like Lucy come say hey uh yes. kaylee is gonna help us along with obviously chat if you love lucy let us uh let us know um and then we will be back the following monday for more luna stuff uh so come hang out for that as well um i will believe we are getting into subunit stuff am i correct on that alex uh yeah basically the next the next stream will be the subunits that debuted during this uh initial member rollout. Release. Okay. Yeah. And then um pretty much any of the subunit stuff that happened prior to full group debut we're gonna cover. Um and then it should roll right into some of the beginning of full group Luna next stream as well. Very nice. Okay. And then we have no clue what we're doing the following Wednesday. So uh let us know who you would like us to do next uh we are open to suggestions 
I just knew we wanted to do a K-Ban since we haven't done one of those in quite a hot minute. So, um, Specifically, Brandon said, if I am gatekept another day from this Lucy <laughs> band that has a violin, I will quit. I didn't say listen that. to all of the K-pop. I didn't say that. That's the exact word to use. Uh, exactly. I, I heard it. <laughs> fuck anyway i did not say that <laughs> however i did say that i wanted to check out lucy really badly so i did my pitch for kaylee yeah as as i do as as one of the members here i wanted to wanted to do it so um but yeah yes kaylee did get me hooked that is correct so uh stitcher twin uh we have done weki meki uh we just did them mm -hmm. what about one, about a month ago no, actually, it was longer than that because we did it during uh, BTS. Little... No, we did it during BTS month. So two months, probably two months ago, roughly. Yeah. Yeah. You can check BTS that out. BTS was the side of Wakey Makey. Yeah. Yep. We did, yep, we did make Wakey Makey. Very good. Very fun. Um, yeah. I saw somebody, a person or two, was asking for a secret number. Ooh. Um, maybe, maybe the following Wednesday we could do them. I think they're a one stream, one and done. Okay. Dive okay. on. It could could be a fun one. I know that would be a. I think everyone would have fun with that one. Maybe we'll run a poll. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out what you guys want to see for the not this Wednesday, the following Wednesday. So very nice. Um, but yeah, if you like this, follow us on Twitch here. That is the Ooh, best way to know. Who goes. That is the best way to know. That's another good one. From us nine, it would be fun. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. Feel free to let us know, uh, hang out. Uh, as I mentioned, Discord is pinned, so come join us. Say hello yeah, to all did of you, us. Did you guys want to pick a uh, color, animal, and oh. superpower slash fruit slash place? <laughs> I think Alex um, already picked his. Technically. All right, my color is yellow. My instrument is the slot machine. My location <laughs> is the uh, Borgata Casino in Las Vegas. <laughs> Um <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alex is part of one third. Uh that means Brandon and I have to be odd eye circle and why why by why. Oh god. I guess I'll um, be I guess I'll be odd eye circle. So Yeah, pick your uh superpower. Okay, superpower would be uh God fuck. Uh I'll do flight. Flight would be fun. Ooh um, excellent. So is superpower, what else was it? Your color, color and your animal. Color, I'll do... I'll do red. And animal... We'll do a... God, what the hell? I'll also do a red panda. That would be my animal. All right, simple enough. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think it um, works. Uh, I'm going to say my color for sure is green. Love green. My animal is usually giraffe because I'm tall. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would tall. tower over these Luna members. Um, <laughs> I felt very short uh, next to Therese. So I guess yeah. I, have a, I have to choose a fruit, but... I'm going to choose pancakes because <laughs> <laughs> it's my rules. Uh, <laughs> it's mine. All right. Writing that down. Fruit. Writing that down. Yeah. Interesting fruit. Um, <laughs> I guess if I had to choose fruit, uh, I'll go with kiwi. I love a kiwi. No, you're in odd eye circle. You Fuck. have a superpower. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Blueberry they... pancakes. Yeah. Blueberry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, your superpower they can have to be... be in pancakes. Uh... Your superpower could be materializing kiwis. <laughs> and flight? Could be. It no, could you be. have to pick one. Oh, no, I'm doing flight for sure. Why would I want right, to well, materialize kiwis? superpower is materializing kiwis and flight. <laughs> what if I'm, like, flying and I also materialize <laughs> kiwis? Like, what if I'm flying and I, just disper and I just disperse kiwis as I'm flying? You only p get to pick one. Choose wisely. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, All right. hey. Who was it that had world slash time slash yeah, space see? travel? 
I can do it. Yeah. Which I don't I don't understand because then there was another member that had teleportation. Like, why do you need both? <laughs> and then super speed? These are all like the same power to me. <laughs> I understand. It's the easy easiest ones that we can edit into the music video, right? <laughs> Who's the Android? <laughs> oh, who's the Android out of us three? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Who is the Android between us three? I have an Android. It's me. I mean, I also have an Android to use. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Alex has an iPhone, I'm pretty sure. So <laughs> someone someone's real quiet over there. <laughs> yeah. It's Alex. <laughs> it's Alex. Alex he doesn't have Android. an Android, so he yeah. is an Android. He is the Android. Yeah. Okay. There we go, Leo. We have we deciphered. Yeah. There we uh. go. All right. Well. Anyway, thanks for uh, thanks for letting us Hanging know we're, lo we're yeah, now losing. That, now that we've established some uh, audio addiction lore. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Love to see it. Well, thank you y'all for having fun. Uh, we will see y'all on Wednesday for Lucy. Let's go. Very excited. And uh, have a have a good time soon, y'all. We'll see you soon. Bye. See ya.